So we're talking about how investigation five will work briefly today, um, how uh, we're going to measure the rate of photosynthesis. So that's our goal, measuring the rate of photosynthesis in any kind of cell that can do photosynthesis. In this case, we're going to see that we're working with spinach leaves and the chloroplasts within them. Um, we could do this several different ways. We could measure how much oxygen they produce. We could measure how much um, carbon dioxide they take in. Uh, but we're actually going to use a very different method called the dye reduction method from the old lab manual, um, from the old AP biology course. And that involves using a chemical called DPIP. Uh, DPIP, I'm just going to call it DPIP, um, stands for something. It stands for 2,6-dichlorophenol endophenol. Um, that doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, so please just call it DPIP for the uh, course of our discussion. Um, DPIP is a chemical that is really useful for measuring the rate of photosynthesis because it's capable of competing with NADP plus to grab high energy electrons when they're generated by the photosystems um, within chloroplasts. So we've discussed the role of the photosystems in creating high energy electrons. We said that the pigments um, are um, absorbing light energy and using the light energy to boost high energy electrons that are grabbed by the photosystem. Um, and we learned that this next photosystem might send them to be grabbed by NADP+, which eventually produces NADPH. So if we were to take these chloroplasts and sort of surround them with a solution of DPIP or DPIP, um, then maybe occasionally it can grab the high energy electrons before NADP plus can. Um, now how does that help us? Well, because DPIP, when it grabs the high energy electrons, um, that's what, when they call this a dye reduction technique, grabbing high energy electrons is also called chemical reduction. Um, so when it grabs the high energy electrons, it causes the chemical to change colors. Uh, DPIP without high energy electrons is blue, um, very deep blue in color. Um, whereas um, DPIP that has grabbed high energy electrons is more clear. And so basically what we can do in this lab is we can define photosynthetic activity as a, a gradual color change from dark blue to clear. And we have a way of measuring just how much the color is changed with our spectrophotometer machines. We've used this back in the enzyme lab. Um, back then we actually measured uh, what was called the absorbance, um, how opaque something was becoming. Um, uh, absorbance was how well it absorbed the light that the spectrophotometer was shooting at the sample. Um, we're going to do just the opposite in this lab. We're going to instead in instruct the spectrophotometer to measure percent transmittance of light through the sample. So um, this is just going to be on a scale from 0% to 100%. 0% would be like perfectly opaque, um, and 100% would be perfectly clear. So uh, how clear is the DPIP becoming would give us a way of inferring how much photosynthetic activity, specifically activity within the light reactions, uh, is taking place. So uh, we need some chemicals to run this lab. Um, very briefly, we are uh, certainly have our DPIP solution. Um, I made it at a 0.1% concentration. Uh, we're also using something called phosphate buffer solution. Uh, so why are we using that? Uh, recall the purpose of buffers in biological systems or chemical systems. Uh, buffers simply help ch uh, prevent drastic swings in pH. So as it turns out, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking our spinach chloroplasts and blending them, or, or spinach leaves, and blending them to kind of release the spinach chloroplasts. Um, they're going to be outside of their natural cellular context. So we're just adding this buffer solution to ensure that there won't be these crazy pH swings um, that could cause adverse effects on all of our photosystem proteins. Uh, we're also going to be adding distilled water. And we need a source of plant chloroplasts, and I already talked about how we're using spinach. In fact, in the next slide, we're going to talk about how I prepared that. So this is how I prepared the spinach chloroplasts. I just added some cold sugar solution. The sugar will help grind the cells open and, and cause them to burst. We add our source of uh, chloroplasts. In this case, we're using spinach leaves. 
I'll try and use a set amount, a uh, set mass of them, so that if you wanted to compare the photosynthetic rates of different species, we could. And we just put them into the blender and let the blender and the sugar solution uh, chop them open. And then we just filter it through some cheesecloth um, to get the um, suspension of chloroplasts. So we have four cuvettes uh, that we want to work with in this initial experiment. Um, the first one is the blank, and the blank is going to be something you'll need to make for your student designed experiment also. Uh, the blank uh, gets phosphate buffer solution, gets water, and still gets the spinach chloroplasts, uh, but it's not going to get any DPIP. We're just going to replace the amount of DPIP we normally add with water because we want the blank to be perfectly clear except for the slight green of the spinach chloroplast drops. In other words, we're going to show the spectrophotometer that this is what the cuvette would look like if it were perfectly 100% clear. Uh, the blank is used to show the spectrophotometer what 100% looks like in this experiment. Uh, there's a second cuvette we're going to use, and that's a, a dark cuvette. The dark cuvette's going to get all the normal materials that we're giving to all the others. It gets DPIP, phosphate buffer, water, spinach chloroplasts, but we're going to cover the cuvette tube in foil so that it doesn't get access to light energy. We're going to contrast that with a cuvette that does get access to light energy. It, of course, gets the DPIP, the phosphate buffer, the water, and the spinach chloroplasts. And then we're going to have something we call a negative control. Uh, sometimes in various experiments, you often want to set up a group um, that you're trying to demonstrate no results or no change, perhaps. That's often what we um, are trying to achieve with a negative control. Um, I'm actually going to have your group discuss in your lab report why we're setting up this particular group in the experiment and what it demonstrates. Uh, but it's going to get DPIP, phosphate buffer, water, and instead of getting the drops of spinach chloroplasts, we're just going to put three drops more of water into that cuvette um, and still give it access to light. So um, you might think about what the purpose of that one is for your future lab report. Uh, this is what your laboratory setup might look like. You've got the spectrophotometer machine um, that you'll have access to. You'll have all the cuvettes um, in a cuvette rack and access to aluminum foil for your dark cuvette. Um, you've got some large pipettes to fill five milliliters of solution with. This is actually just a device that you'll use to draw the liquid up through those pipettes. Um, you'll have access to a, a mixture of phosphate buffer, DPIP, and water. Um, that's what you'll be adding to most of your cuvettes. I'm actually going to keep this um, jar myself. This is um, a phosphate buffer and just water in a mixture. This is what you'd be adding to your blank cuvettes. And just to save you a, a pipette and some time, I'll add all of that to your cuvettes for you. You've got some parafilm um, to mix everything once you add everything together. You've got some tissue paper that I kind of hid behind the bottle here. Uh, the tissue paper, you remember you have to wipe down the cuvettes on the sides before you put it into the spectrophotometer machine. Um, you've got a source of spinach chloroplasts um, uh, prepared as I described. It might be in a different bottle than this. Um, and then you've got your light source, your 100 watt light bulb shining through a fish bowl that is full of water. Um, so, and the cuvettes would go um, immediately on the other side um, of the fishbowl. So what's the purpose of having it shine through a bowl of water? Um, the bowl of water is what we call a heat sink. Um, in other words, it's letting the light energy through still, um, but it's absorbing the heat. Remember how we said water has a very high specific heat? Um, so we just want to make sure that we don't boil our chloroplasts on the other side. Um, or raise their temperature too dramatically. Though, if you want to change your temperature in the student design experiment, you'll certainly be able to. Okay, so you're ready to add chemicals uh, before you get started. Um, you're going to use your pipettes to add five milliliters of the DPIP, phosphate buffer solution, and water to the three cuvettes that get them. The dark, the light, the negative control. Um, I will add the five mils of phosphate buffer and water to your blank. And you don't want to add the chloroplast just yet. Um, we'll talk about uh, a, a method for making this as accurate as possible. Remember that as soon as you add the chloroplast um, with DPIP around it, it might start turning the DPIP uh, clear. So we want to be very careful to start that when we want to start our experiment officially. 
So here is where I'm adding spinach chloroplast to the blank only, three drops. Um, and then you want to mix it with parafilm. So parafilm on top and just kind of shake it to make sure that it gets all mixed. Whenever you put any cuvette into the spectrophotometer, you must wipe the sides with tissue paper first to make sure it's nice and clean. And then we're ready to calibrate the spectrophotometer. And so with nothing in there, we want to turn the left knob to zero. That will tell it uh, that there's zero with nothing in there. And then we want to put the blank into the spec. And we're going to tell the machine that that should represent 100%. And you're going to do that with the right knob. I've got little signs on the spectrophotometer that try and make that very clear, but you've got to turn the right knobs. The Cambridge machines, by the way, might work a little differently, so we'll talk about that in class. So this is just a video of me running the experiment. When you're ready to run, you want to add your chloroplast to your cu experimental cuvettes one at a time. So put them all in front of the light source, and then as you add your spinach chloroplasts, like I'm doing here, you want to quickly uh, mix it and wipe it down with the tissue paper before taking your initial time zero reading in the spectrophotometer. And you also just want to have maybe somebody else note the time that you're doing all this so that you know when to check it five minutes later, ten minutes later, fifteen minutes later. And by staggering the experimental cuvettes and doing them one at a time, you won't have to rush or sort of be off time or only be able to measure one of them after five minutes. Um, so give yourself that time and maybe a minute or two later you're going to add three drops of chloroplast to the next experimental cuvette. Um, and once again recording time, mixing, um, wiping down with tissue paper. The other thing I suggest that I'm not doing right away in this video is make sure to occasionally put the blank back into the spectrophotometer to recalibrate the machine. If you put it back in there, you might find that it's not at 100% and that you need to turn the right knob to make it 100% again. So make sure to occasionally do that to get the best readings. Finally, with the negative control cuvette, remember to add three drops of water not three drops of chloroplasts. All right, so uh, hopefully in summary you can answer these three questions for me. You can tell me what DPIP is doing to help us measure the rate of photosynthesis. You can identify which four cuvettes we are testing in the initial experiment. Um, and you can justify why maybe we want to just add the three drops of chloroplasts to one of the cuvettes at a time um, um, and then measure it, rather than add all the chloroplasts and then try and run the measurements from there.